gamers we're back it's uh what month is it july and we're back with another tier list disclaimer this sieve tier list is in my opinion a sieve tier list for top level gameplay disclaimer this tier list is not representative of every league in the game because people are at different levels in terms of skill and uh, if you're a gold player that I love of course and or silver or bronze or platinum these uh, uh, civ tier lists might not be applicable in your case because everyone in gold league might not be able to execute the play styles and build orders like the players at the top level disclaimer disclaimer so if I put a sieve in a D tier list, that does not mean you should quit the sieve. That probably means that that's what it means at the top level. And in your level, probably doesn't mean shit. Disclaimer, this sieve tier list is strictly for entertaining purposes and revealing some knowledge at the top level play. And also no gold players were harmed in the making of this video. I forgot to say that. My lawyer told me to say that. Shout out to Goldies. All right, so let's get into it. <clears throat> now I'm gonna base this sieve tier list uh, on land maps like Dry Arabia, Lipany, Highview, and so on and so forth because there's always it's always the same shit on hybrid maps. You you guys already know it. If you watched any sieve tier list, you know it. The best sieve in 2023 July is. Damn, they're good, huh? Now, Rus used to be second best behind Malians. Well, Malians got kicked in the nuts, and well, Rus is at the top. What a surprise! Um, I will say, I think Rus is just the best sieve. Uh, Kremlin is just incredibly powerful. The extra wood, you know, it's a night sieve. It can put pressure in fuel. It's great late game. What's not to love? They did receive like a nerf on, um, and it's so hot. They did receive a nerf in um, Kremlin, so they can't spawn them instantly. But honestly, still pretty good. The next sit we will be discussing is going to be. Oof, this is a hard one actually. This is a hard one. We're gonna go with H R E. A tier, um, I think the only downside of HRE is pro. I, I might change these at the end, by the way, depending on how, you know, how it looks. But I think HRE is just all around solid sieve. Um, it doesn't really have bad matchups. The Demalion being nerfed is also pretty good for HRE. So, you know, it's just a good sieve. Like, I don't, I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's insane. It's just overall pretty good sieve. You can castle rush, you can... You know, play 2TC, you can do a lot of stuff. So, very nice. <clears throat> the next one we will be talking about is, is going to be English. <sighs> Listen, I think English is good, but so many of the top sieves just dent in English so bad that... That's why I'm rating it here. Like, I think English against the sieves that it's good against is really good against. But the fact is, French, Rus, and HRE absolutely fucking demolish English. French versus English is one of the most, uh, or one of the more one-sided matchups that English has. And not in their favor. Yeah. Uh, English cannot produce, or sorry, HRE cannot produce English as well by so, so much. English got like very small timing to do some damage against French Rus or, or HRE and then it just kind of snowballs from there. English is S tier in gold. Thank you. Right. Shout out to gold players. If you're in gold, there you go. English is S tier in gold. So is uh, Rus. So is Abbasid. So is French. So is Delhi. I'm joking. Listen, listen. Quick gold tier list. Uh, whatever sieve you're playing, D tier. Whatever your opponent is playing, S tier. That's how you know, okay? So just play what the opponent is playing. There you go. Uh, the next one we'll be talking about is going to be French. 
and French is, in my opinion, one of the best sieves in the game right now. Um, there were some changes, obviously, not, not in the most recent patch, but the one before that made uh, French a lot better. And one of the reasons why French was um, not necessarily struggling, but wasn't like a top, top tier sieve. I think I put it in A tier last time, but I think with Malians uh, nerfed, um, some of the other stuff nerfed. The way that people play the top level is usually like 2TC or 3TC into aggression. And the French passive, as I like to call it, the budget song dynasty. It just, you just create such a massive villager lead that over time, even though you don't have any special bonuses other than you having knights and feudal. Um, and like cheaper upgrades, which is whatever. You just build such a big economic lead and... It's so... I mean, th this is the easiest sieves to kill workers with. Uh, one French knight, basically two shots a worker. If you get a charge off and an auto attack, um, you just kill the worker. So it's very easy to lose workers against them. And it's also very easy to kill workers with. And that just extends the lead that, that um, French has. So, yeah. Um, it's also... Uh, in my opinion, an okay matchup into Rus, depending how the Rus plays. I think Rus is probably favored, but it's an okay matchup. It's an okay matchup into HRE. It, it craps on, on China. So, yeah. Um, the next sieve we will be talking about will be Malians. Now, in my opinion, for myself, I think Malians is, is for me, for, for me, me, me. A top tier sieve like I would probably put it S tier but this is what's been happening uh, Malian used to be very OP very broken it was banned in tournaments all the time and everyone was playing it and honestly you couldn't tell much difference between <laughs> some Malian players because it, the sieve was so strong that anyone could play it and, and get a win against way better players even but now that Malian is nerfed a lot of players are kind of exposed that they're not actually that good with Malians. And Malian, you have to be super aggressive. You have timing that you're going to have to use and, and push through. But there are counterplays to Malian now. It doesn't just like completely demolish sieves. There are ways to play around it and against it. So I think that a, a player who is not that good of a Malian player is not going to beat an, beat an experienced French or Rus or HRA player anymore. Where that was the case before. And that's why it was permaban in tournaments. So I do think it's still a pretty good sieve. It did receive a lot of nerfs. But it's a very unique sieve. And if you know how to play it well, it is very, very, very strong. The next one uh, we'll be talking about is going to be Abbasid. Now, I've, I've been changing my mind on Abbasid a little bit. I gotta say, uh, people have been thinking on my stream that I'm memeing and I'm joking, but Abbasid, I'm not. So there's some sieves that I'm not sure on yet. I've been playing a lot of Abbasid, um, and I think Abbasid is quite strong. Now, I'm not gonna say it's like one of the best sieves, uh, because obviously it, it does have a little bit of a slower buildup, you know, and, and some of these aggro sieves can punish Abbasid pretty easily. But it's it's a pretty, like, in a way, solid sieve. If you would like to play defensive, Abbasid is the way to go. The only reason I'm not putting Abbasid higher is because its aggressive potential is almost non-existent. So it's very uh, um, one-dimensional in terms of like, okay, well, you go for 2TC or 3TC and everyone knows you're going to do that. And yeah. So we've also seen some... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, or we've seen a lot of military wing openers and uh, military wing on paper is pretty bad what it does allow you is to get a second TC without making units so basically if you go eco wing and you make only one TC you still have to make a barracks most of the time to defend knights or horsemen but with military wing your TC is a bit more expensive but you instantly have four units that not only you can defend the horsemen or knights but you can actually push and pressure your opponent. So it's kind of funny how that has worked out. And I would say Eco Wing is only worth if you're going three TCs or more. Or like, you know, double two extra TCs or, or more. Because if you're not going to do more than, uh, more than that, then Military Wing is probably the best way to go about it. The Culture Wing, 
I mean, some people have been testing with it, but I, I don't think it's that that great. Um, it will probably find some kind of play in the future because I think Abbasid is a pretty diverse sieve in terms of that and there's a lot of stuff going on. So maybe people are going to figure out something about that. And I could see Abbasid honestly going up. One of the biggest surprises and one of the biggest reasons why I think Abbasid is like on the up up is I think very recently people started using composite bows in castle and oh brother like if you're playing abyssin in feudal you have like two two three tc you mass archers and then once you age up and you get archer veteran upgrade and composite bows they fucking melt everything like they do insane dps so sometimes you have these games where you got like 60 archer 20 spearmen you age up and you upgrade those 60 archers and they just destroy everything that, that that's on the map it's like just mow down everything and i was quite surprised how good it is because that upgrade composite bows in the military wing has been where it is in the tech for a while now but people have just played different style of abbasid i think they haven't played that style yet and uh yeah, it's very, very strong. Very, very strong. So I do see, put like, on these five sieves, I'm, I think they're pretty much where, where I put them. On Abbasid, I could see it going higher. But it's also one of the sieves that, and this is a problem at, at the top level, because players know how to exploit spawns very well. If Abbasid gets a really, really bad spawn, the game becomes a lot harder for you against some of these aggressives. Whereas, you know, Malian or Rus or, or French, even to some extent h3 you don't really care about your spawn too much i mean even english you don't really care where your deer are or if your berries are too far away but abbasid gets quite impacted by that and it also in my opinion affects the rating like if you get a really good spawn it's probably a tier already but sometimes it's like uh, you know the next sieve we will be talking about is going to be this is a rough one. I, I don't I can't really I'm trying to I can't really have five tiers Next sieve we'll be talking about is Delhi It's not good and uh, the reason it's not I mean it's not good. It's it's fucking good like obviously you can you can beat players with it but the biggest problem with Delhi is it's one dimensional. That that's the biggest issue. Like you know exactly and this has been a problem with Delhi since the start. Except, you know, a few months ago or a year ago, Delhi used to be like S tier or A tier because people didn't know how to play against Delhi. Now people have figured out how to play against Delhi and Delhi has not changed. So I think Delhi can you, you can play Delhi, you can win with Delhi, but some of these matchups just don't really feel good. It's like yeah, you can win, but it doesn't feel good. Like I would say Delhi versus English and Abbasid is very, very good for Delhi. But then it's like Delhi into French and Rus feels really bad. Like really, really bad. Um Cause against some of these sieves, you can kind of cheese it and, and like rush castle. But if you rush castle against French or Rus, you're you're just gonna die because they have knights and H two knights actually don't trade that better against H three knights. So yeah, I, I would say the biggest downside is the fact that okay, yeah, it doesn't matter if Delhi goes Dome of Faith or Tower of Victory, they gotta get sacred sites. Um, I recently they, they obviously got Ghazi Raiders which they are good don't get me wrong but they're also more expensive than the horsemen and um, the sacred sides gold got nerfed right so yeah you kind of got Ghazi Raiders but then the sacred side gold got nerfed so it's like you know I'm not gonna say it evens out but it did not receive like a, a buff now what I would like for Delhi to happen is not to just buff their their sacred sides or buff their research times. I don't want their archers to do one more damage. I want Delhi to have a different play style. That would be the biggest buff to the sieve, because right now you don't gotta scout Delhi for shit. 
it, you just you can play it blindly I would love if somehow 2TC Delhi was more of a thing where it's like okay you can go for macro style you know um, like obviously having like research time reduced in Imperial would be great for Delhi because they take fucking long so yes that would be a buff but in Feudal and Castle that's not the issue um, another thing that I would love seeing added for Delhi is Culverin. Culverin would help Delhi a lot in Imperial without making it like broken or like, you know, something else. And I feel like Delhi Castle is so strong, but you always enter Castle in some kind of scuffed fucking way. Or you're, you're like so far ahead already, or you're just dead and you're trying to make keeps to survive. It, it just feels weird. I don't know. Uh, also, House of Learning. Is that what it's called? Yeah, House of Learning is a really bad landmark. Probably one of the worst landmarks in the game. Um, like, the most useful upgrade is is the the, the Lancer one and, and Man at Arm getting 3 damage. Like, that's gotta be higher. Like, the Man at Arm being, like, plus 3, like, okay. But the Knights should be getting, like, plus 6 or something. Like, it's just not noticeable. The, the knights and lancers have so much damage that plus three doesn't do much. Like, it's not... If, if a spearman got plus three, that's crazy, right? But, yeah. I think Delhi... Yeah, Delhi landmarks in general are pretty bad. Um, I, I would say that the best Delhi landmarks are Compounded Defender and Tower of Victory. And you know what the funny thing is? I, I think Delhi and Imperial, once you get your upgrades and all that shit, is actually pretty decent. Because you have elephants that are actually very, very, very strong. They're just extremely expensive. And you have hand cannoneers, if you went out of week three, that have, that have attack speed on them. And men at arms with attack speed and spear with attack speed. But it just getting there is so fucking hard. It, it feels like Delhi has another age in between castle and imperial. And it's like a wait, wait 15 minutes age up, you know? It's like you don't go from castle to imperial and you get upgrades. You go from castle to 15 minutes to imperial. And that's where Delhi struggles a lot. And then feudal is very one dimensional, like I said. So those are the things I would like to see changed. The next sieve we will be talking about is Ottoman. Now, I will say, out of all the sieves in this tier list, one sieve that I can see go higher is Abbasid. And one sieve that I can see go a lot higher is Ottoman. Now, Ottoman did receive Sipahi buffs. And Sipahi are actually really, really good now for raiding. They dent in the archers. They're, they're way better than they used to be. But I feel like the future for Ottoman is probably 2TC. You will, like, I, I think 1TC Ottoman is still fine. But it's very predictable. And I've been testing around with 2TC Ottoman. And it feels weird to play because it, it's, it's a unique sieve, right? But I feel like if an opponent goes to TC and you go to TC and you also have like the Vizier point bonuses, you have Mechter and you have military schools, in theory you should do well. But I think that people just don't know how to play Ottoman really well, including myself. And we've been on this one TC shit very, very long. So I've been testing a lot with Ottoman 2TC or even 3TC sometimes. I'm trying to find like what the limit is. Um, but it, as of right now, it just doesn't feel very strong. Um, it has a similar problem with... It like shares a problem with Delhi and Abbasid. With Delhi in terms of like, you know what they're going to do. And with Abbasid in terms of it's a slower build-up sieve. But the problem is that... Unlike Abbasid that has one of the best late games and one of the best castles as well, Ottoman's late game is pretty mediocre. And the issue with going like 2 or 3 TC is like, okay, great, now I have more economy. But then you are kind of pushing the game towards late game and that's not where Ottoman is very good at. So I personally would like to see some kind of Ottoman buff in Imperial. I don't really know what. But I would really like to see some kind of buff in Imperial. But even without buffs, I, I can see Ottoman like climbing here. I, I don't think it's going to climb maybe here, but I, I can see it climb a bit up. The next sieve we'll be talking about is China. Where do you guys think China is? 
Ultima lane marks are shit. Um, yeah, I would say they're not. I mean, their best landmark, funnily enough, is the the feudal landmark. the The berry landmark is one of the best landmarks in the game. It is it is so so good. It gives you so much food. It's crazy good. So China, I think obviously it's the best late game sieve by by far. I don't think any sieve come comes close. Um, I think it's very very good, but. I'm gonna have to put it into a tier. Mm, looking like this, I, I don't know if a tier should be moved. Probably not. I'll probably go like this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think China is S tier. Uh, it's 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 very similar to Abbasid. I think it's very spawn dependent. Very very spawn dependent. Sometimes you have like the most disgusting fucking barbican in between, like wood stone deer and berries and you're just like when you see it as an opponent you know you see that and you're just like bro because you, you just can't do anything you know they're gonna get their two tc and then boom up and that's it but if you get even a mediocre spawn yeah I, I feel like china is really good and people got a lot better with china you know uh the place that with china used to be like spearmen into castle rushes or spearmen horsemen or like some spearmen in zuginu <clears throat> but since you know a few months ago people figure out you know Zugan are pretty fucking good so these days if you get a bad spawn with china you people learn how to adapt and how to break out and maybe even be aggressive on the other side people also figured out like wait i don't need to rush castle at all like i can just stay in feudal and i can just kill castle units with Zuginu if i have enough of them so China is not so like oh my god I gotta get castle and I gotta age up and I gotta do all these things it's 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 much more kind of like um, passive even though it was passive already but it's much more like okay we got nothing to worry about kind of thing let's slowly wall off and even if you have extremely bad spawns to where you're one of deer pack and one berry patch is so far away people have started doing granary transitions a lot earlier like a lot earlier one of the fastest granary transition i mean i'm not or farm transitions i'm not counting english in the game because granaries and and uh chinese farms are really fucking good and the moment china gets granaries down the game becomes really hard for the opponent before that it can be rough uh especially some of these more more aggressives and there's been a lot of development. The reason why I'm not putting them S tier is because uh, the enemy can snowball against you very hard. Uh, HRE is very good against China. I would say Abbasid is pretty good against China too. I think Rus and French um, can outgreed China. So what we've seen recently at the top level, when we see French versus China or Rus versus China, Rus or French go 3 TC. And they take the whole map so even though you're camping in your little spot they force you to stay in feudal for so long you actually run out of wood or you would run out of like gold or something and you have to move out on the map and that's when they get you um so people started playing like a lot greedier against china and it has been working another thing that we've seen and, and i suggest you guys to try this out if you're playing a sieve that can trade if you're struggling versus China, if you're Abbasid or even Malian or even French or Mongol, try trading early against China because by the time they get their Barbican out and, and Imperial Academy and their second TC, your trade is already going. And then you're forcing them to attack you, which is a full infantry civ at that point. And that's not very good for them. English can literally crush Rus with half a brain. Sorry, I think I just got... I just got a stroke. China? Yeah, yeah, okay. There, Yeah, there is a timing, but... Um, okay, so I, I will go on that. He said uh, English versus China. China can lose to mass longbows. Now, I will address that because there has been a period of like two weeks where English at top level were actually denting in China. In feudal. With literally mass longbows and like few spearmen. And then, you know what top players figured out? Wait, I don't need to rush Imperial Academy in Barbican. So they would age up with one villager, put like 10 on wood, throw down two archer ranges, make 
30 archers. Okay, not 30, like 15. And then English comes with five longbows. And China beats his ass down and just gets Barbican or whatever. And the game goes on. So, yeah. But if you do play greedy as China, yeah, the longbows will get you. So that, that has happened. But the top players have adapted. And that's no longer the case. I think China beats English pretty hard. And Mongols, the last Civ. And I'm going to be honest uh, with this one. I have been playing Mongols. I have been winning a lot with Mongols. I'm gonna be honest. I've been winning a lot more with Mongols. I don't think I lost a single game this season with Mongols. Obviously, that's not a proof or anything, but they feel pretty good. But <laughs> that doesn't mean that they're good. Mongol feels a lot better than it used to be. Okay. It feels a lot more playable. Um... It feels like, ooh, I can fight in feudal. Like, I've been actually trying to force fights in feudal, and you can actually win against the other civs in feudal, which is, like, mind-blowing, because Mongol was always fucking garbage in feudal. So that's great. Now, the tower rushing is obsolete. It just does not happen anymore. Um, the only civ you could tower rush, or two civs, are, are uh, French and Abbasid. The other civs you cannot tower rush, or there's no point to tower rush. French you can still tower rush. Abbasid you cannot, because of the military uh, wing. Military wing comes out, they either stop your tower rush, or they just make a ram and destroy your tower, and then you're just like, oh. So that part kind of sucks for, for Mongol, because that's what a lot of Mongol was kind of based on and played on. Now, the trade for Mongol, I think, is still the way to go. Um, I don't... I don't. I, I think Deerstones just ain't it, you know? It just, it's just not it. I think trade is just a lot better. You force your opponent to come out on the map, and then you make Keshix and Archers and beat them down. And that's how I've been playing, and I've been doing pretty well. But, with all that being said, there is one thing that I noticed. The old way of playing Mongol is kind of gone. And what I mean by that is, now you can fight in Feudal with Kashyyyk and Archers, great. You can trade like before, great. But in the previous patch, you were trading, you defend your trade, you hit Castle, and then you're fucking slamming Lancers into their face. You know, you're just fucking slamming Lancers, you're making, you're killing fucking Spearmen, you're destroying everything, everything's great. Well, that doesn't work anymore, because Keshix have a lot less HP. So even though these days it's a lot easier to secure trade, spamming Keshix in Castle doesn't really work. Like, you can't just kill your opponent with Keshix. Um, so... I don't know what the state of Mongol is, to be honest. And I'm not gonna say, like, they're unusable or they're awful. But I do think that there needs to be a playstyle adjustment with Mongol. I don't know what that playstyle is. Like maybe you should open Kashyyyk Archer, defend your trade, and then go into like Man at Arm Crossbow and just ditch Kashyyyk completely. I, I don't know, but you cannot have your army in Castle be Kashyyyk plus Crossbows. You will... Like Kashyyyk cannot be your main army is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, now, yeah, I've seen some people rushing, like, Kurul Tai, and then he, I've seen some people also going for, uh, a monks with Mongol to have, like, the Kashyyyk healing, the, the Kurul Tai healing, and, and, uh, monk healing, but I just don't know if that's enough to kind of overwhelm your opponents. Um, they just die very fast, is, is kind of the, the thing, and... At the same time, they do cost less resources, right? I think they're amazing for raiding. I think they're amazing for raiding. Uh, because they, they do have healing. You know, it doesn't heal insane amounts, but it heals a little bit. They obviously do a shit ton of damage. So I think maybe the Mongol style will be like, trade in feudal, Keshik Archer, you age up, and maybe you just continue raiding the whole time with, with your Keshiks, and, and you just run them in villagers and just suicide them over and over but you're gonna have to transition out of them for the main fight and when i say transition out of them you, you can you can you need different melee units you need spearmen or, or men at arms you cannot have them in the main fight 
You can, but you can't have them as the main melee units, right? So, I think right now what's happening, and I've been doing the same thing. I've been trying to force Keshex into main planes in Castle, and it, it just... I mean, the moment the fight starts, you see your shit just die. And I think a lot of the people are still in that mindset of like, Oh, I age up Castle, I keep making Lancers. But they're not Lancers, right? They're, they're Keshex. So, I think that once people kind of get that into their head, I think that Mongol will be doing better than they are now. Which is not to say that they're doing bad, okay? With that being said, I don't think Mongol is the worst Civ, because I, I do think that it's a lot harder to fight against Mongols than it is to fight against Ottoman and, uh, and Delhi. And there were some buffs for Mongol Imperial Age, which is like the 30% HP on your buildings, aka towers, and stuff like that, which is going to help them in the late game. I, I, I would say Ottoman has the biggest chance of improvement once people figure out a little bit more. I would say Abbasid has a chance to go higher and Mongol has a chance to go higher. And, and you know, Mongol has some good matchups. Like, I think I think French versus Mongol is a lot better for uh, Mongol than it used to be. I think French versus, or sorry, uh, Mongol versus China is actually a pretty good matchup for Mongol because of the trade. It's actually very annoying from China point of view to fight Mongol trade. But like I said, I think we kind of have to figure out how exactly to do Mongol. So, I think Mangudai needs buff. I mean, potentially. Mangudai are really bad. Imperial Mangudai are actually very good. And um, I would love... Like, I'm not too into like... Um, into like, oh, this Civ should feel like that or should feel like this. Like, as long as it's good gameplay, I'm fine with it. But I feel like Mongol is genuinely a Civ. That is supposed to like you're supposed to be building towers everywhere and you're supposed to control the map you know you do stuff like that and i would love if 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 mangudai were a bit better like not a massive buff but but a bit better you could do uh keshik mangudai and you could raid everywhere and they're both very squishy units so you kind of need to raid with those but in the back you would need to defend with your standard units I would love if, if that that's what Mongol turns into. And I would love to see a tiny buff for the Mangudai. In Feudal and Castle specifically. Because I do think they're pretty bad right now. I don't know what kind of buff. Like maybe give them back the movement speed. Maybe give them one more damage. Like I, I don't know. Something. Something. Mangudai with less health. I mean they already got no health man. Like I don't know if you know. But they, they get fucking clapped by anything that touches them. They're got, I don't know, what, what what's the health of Mangudai? It's pretty low, right? It's 90? Jesus Christ. You know what another problem is with Mangudai? Uh, their, their, their turn, their turning is really bad. Like, I mean, if you ever played Mongols, you probably know what I mean. It, they just seem fucking weird. Like, they move like the game's bugged or something. I, especially if you have it, like, with other units. But even when it's not with other units, they just, like... The formation turns like this. Like they go forward and then they rotate, right? They, I feel like they don't have insta turns. They, they just always somehow run into enemy units. And I would love if Mangudai received some kind of patch like Camel Archers, where they made Camel Archers uh, easier to micro. They, they, they remove that delay of Camel Archers shooting and then like recharging or something. I would love to see something like that for Mangudai, where they're just more normal to use. I don't know what other term to use, because right now they just feel bad to, to play with. But I would love if they got something. This Civ tier list is, as of right now, it is July. You know, in two weeks, stuff might change. A lot of the, especially because it's, you know, still new patch, relatively new patch. And, uh... You know, sometimes people on my videos say like, oh, two weeks ago you said this save is S tier, now it's uh, A tier. It's like, well, yeah, people figure out how to play against it more. Uh, maybe we figured out that OP thing that we thought was, people find a way to play against it. So those things change uh, sometimes and sometimes they stay the same. So that's kind of where I'm at. Disclaimer, this is for top level gameplay only and I love Gold League players and silver and bronze and platinum and diamond 
and conquer. And players who don't play the game. If you're watching on YouTube, check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now. And if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.